Hello everyone, this is Michael from gemonbread.io. Today we are interviewing founders of the Order of the Kraken. Please welcome Sean and Darren. Hi guys, good to have you. Thank you for having us. Cool, thank you for accepting the invite. Uh, we've got 10 questions ahead, so let's jump right into them, shall we? Sounds good. Could you give us, uh, our audience, a quick 30-second overview of the Order of the Kraken? Sure, thanks, Michael. So the Order of the Kraken, as you can probably see from the screen, um, is a pirate-themed NFT. So it's a collection of NFTs that we're creating on Cardano with a pirate-themed. And what we've done is we've blended the traditional romantic age of piracy with this new world that we are creating. Um, and so we've created a number of NFTs that are going to fill this narrative that we've created, which is the fact that the world has ended and the earth has been covered by water and the survivors that remain are actually turn out to be the descendants of the pirates of, of the golden age. So our project's going to be divided up into a number of families and these families are going to have links back to these, to the, to these pirates. So in essence, at the moment, we're in a, in a 12 month roadmap and we're, we're doing a distribution of our NFTs um, that will follow the storyline that we've created. And then eventually our project will turn into a, a role playing game where you'll use your assets in this, this world that we created. Um, and then as you were scrolling, so just three or three points to point out there. So we're going to build our project with these three core pillars in place. Mm -hmm. Um, GameFi is going to be one of them. So our project is going to have a number of uh, ways in which you can use your assets um, and to, to gamify them, in, both in the staking platform, but also in, in the end game scenario. Um, you know, and central to our project is community. You know, we want to involve our community in the actual game development itself. So when we build this, this game of ours and, you know, our staking platform and so on, it has the community input right from the start. And we've got a number of ways we're going to gamify the community involvement and actually make that part and parcel of what we're doing as an engagement piece. And then lastly, you know, the reason, one of the reasons why we started the project, um, you know, us being both of us being gamers in our, in our own time is we, you know, the, the fundamental problem with gaming is that when you eventually walk away from the game, all that time you've put in, you don't really own the assets. And so we think yeah. crypto is a great way to solve that particular problem. And so that'll be a core pillar of what we're doing is and how we call it a play to own. So, you know, you've heard you heard all the different, um, you know, free to play and play to earn and all that kind of stuff. But ours is going to be slightly different, I think, in that we're going to do a play to own. So eventually people can you know, own the assets that they play with. And if they want to exit, there is the value of the package of assets they can use to exit. Mm -hmm. And that's where we want to have the true value for the for the project. Awesome. Thanks a lot. By the way, it kind of brings me to one interesting point. I think that uh, Vitalik Buterin had the, the very reason why he started Ethereum blockchain because he was uh, his Wolf character was nerfed and he was upset. So I think he had the very same intention to, to get into the, the, the whole blockchain yeah. industry. <laughs> That's right. I, rem I remember that. Well, he had a Warcraft, he had a, um, a Warlock, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. I think it was the yeah. I rem actually remember that. I had a Warlock as well. I remember the nerf that that came and a lot of people were really upset. Oh, yeah. um, with that. <laughs> awesome. Okay, let's move on to question number two. Uh, what utility comes with owning your NFTs? Yeah, great. So thank you, Michael. We, we touched on on very briefly the NFTs that we're, we're going to be cre uh, creating. And essentially, at the moment, we have three series of NFTs. So we have the, talis the talisman, the Kraken talisman up first. Then we have the family crest and we have the jar of dirt. Um, and mm -hmm. so what we've designed with our NFTs is the ability not for them to only have utility for the future mints, because that's where the utility is, is right now. So if you own a talisman, or if you own a family crest in a certain number, or if you own a jar of dirt, that gives you the whitelisting process for the mints to come. So that is the initial utility for them. But the way we've structured our NFTs is they all work together with eventually being this in-game scenario where you combine the talisman with your family crest with the jar of dirt, with your pirate, and with your ships to form this ultimate package of NFTs. And those are your packages that will, you will use to voyage and adventure on and be tested against the blockchain in a number okay. of different scenarios. So the utility is not only just um, the minting utility for future mints, but also the, you will see in the, the um, various NFTs themselves, they have attributes such as fortune, navigation, resilience, and your NFTs will give you a score based on those three attributes. And those three attributes are what you will use in your end game um, to build up your package of NFTs. 
So the utility is, is both, you know, immediate for the whitelisting process in the future, but also it's it's a longer term strategy where you put the right NFTs together to best sort your way through. So for example, the one you're looking at there, um, there's, a, there's a background called Malstrom. And, and mm -hmm. that is, that is, you know, one of the items that, that one of the events that, you know, initially we had a, a storybook um, with this, a part of ours went on a journey and his ship was tested by various events. And one of them was a Malstrom and he passed that event. So in the future, the same events will be, your pirates will be tested against those. And this is one of the, the advantages of having this particular family crest, because you will have a immunity or you'll have a resilience to mm -hmm. the Malstrom effect. And okay, so okay. that's an example of how the utility stretches both from, you yeah. know, the initial white mis the, the listing, uh, but also to kind of the end game scenario. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your explanation. Uh, I think that uh, now the audience has a better idea about a utility. So let's move on to a question number three. Uh, how did you come up with the whole idea? Yeah, I guess it's um it's a combination of different things. Um, so my my brother, who's the creative between the two of us, uh, was initially looking for an outlet in crypto for the things he wanted to do from a creative perspective. Uh, um, you know, and I was we were both been in blockchain for a while, but going from different chain to different chain, not really being on Cardano. And you know, we were looking for a vehicle in which you know he could kindly do his do his thing. And he did a number of things on, on Ethereum, but at that time it was really the, the um, gas fees were ex extremely mm. high and mm. the noise was extremely loud no one could actually get through if you didn't have a massive following in some form and uh, so we eventually ended up on Cardano and so we were looking for a vehicle here and you know pirates we've always liked pirates originally but we were looking at something that would you know resonate well with the the wider Cardano community you know and the philosophy of pirates is quite similar if you examine it against the philosophy of modern cryptos so, yeah. so it, you know, that resonated, we thought, really well, because it's this, you, you know, rejection of authority and rejection of centralized structures and pirate ships back in those days were run as independent countries. You know, the captain was the king yeah. of, the, of the ship and each person on the ship, each pirate had a say in the way the ship was run. And so it, it, there's a lot of similarities between the philosophy of pirates and kind of the crypto philosophy of, of today. And so that freedom... And that wanting to throw off the traditional structures is is what led us to this is a philosophy and and kind of why pirates became um, our awesome. project. Mm. I think that this is going to resonate with every single member of the audience. <laughs> <laughs> now now in the bear market, I think that this is why we are all here. <laughs> well, ex well, exactly, and yeah, and and I mean the the pirates also they wanted to have this ability to have a financial structure outside of the so you know running the ship as a as an own independent financial vehicle um, outside mm. of all the structures of, of the government and so on is exactly what they did. And so this is essentially what yep. crypto is trying to do, right? And even more now with the banks doing what they're doing. Exactly. Yes, yes. We are in a, in a good time to have this interview and discuss exact those things. All right. Exactly. Perfect. Let's move on to question number four. Uh, what is the team behind the the uh, the order of the Kraken? Right. So, so um, it's founded by myself and my brother, Sean. Um, and I'll let Sean give the overview of his background and his experience. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so basically I come from a uh, graphic design background. Um, I've started off uh, in doing a multimedia and kind of developing websites for Disney, um, doing their mm -hmm. Flash microsites, working for PlayStation and Universal. Um, and then obviously then just progressing more into the kind of like the UX and UI stuff. Um, but always kind of having that graphic design illustration background. Um, yeah, so for me, it's always been a creative process. Um, mm -hmm. I'd rather prefer sitting in an art class than actually going anywhere else. Yeah, and that's, that's <laughs> always true. My brother's always been the one to say, you know, he'll do some pretty pictures and do that for a living. Um, yeah. We're, yeah. We're, we're completely different in that way. So so uh -huh. my background is I'm a lawyer by by trade, um, and I've always been in the tech world as a lawyer. So that's that's kind of where my experience from a tech awesome. field comes from. But mm -hmm. uh, you know I'm on the business side. I'm on the strategy side. I've always done the startup. I've always worked at startups, setting up startup, managing them. Um, and so my brother and I skills that actually gels really well because I take care of all of the the strategic. Um, you know, planning business side and that and gives him the freedom to be the creative director. 
uh, mm -hmm. and you know come up with the creative art and all of the things you see so so we're really lucky to have that skill set and as you can see from the get book that you're looking at now we have about you know 90 percent of everything that is needed in-house so mm -hmm. it allows us to run you, you know a startup on relatively cheap costing because it's the only the two of us uh, yep. and where we do need support obviously is on the tech side and we have mm -hmm. Anvil who currently helps us on the blockchain uh, minting side and when we do start some of the developments, and we and we're probably going to touch on that later in in the chat, um, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll outsource outsource those. So we will look for bespoke um, teams, you, you know, on, in outsourced jurisdictions in order to provide that kind of stuff for us. And then we'll find an internal person to help us manage those projects. Mm -hmm. So I think once we do that, we will cover the full spectrum of who we all yeah. need. Um, and yeah, mm -hmm. and, and then one last one thing. So we, you know, we've got a great set of mods currently in our in our in our Discord who who manage all the the unruly pirates so it's really great to have some guys uh, and some girls interested in helping us out on that side awesome awesome uh how many people in total do do participate on the project or do partake so it's my, yes myself and my brother are the only two real um, project team members and then we have um is it seven or eight mods uh, mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. um, and so and so that's essentially that and then obviously anvil is our is our tech team uh, but that's yeah. that's all. So you know, I take care of the the setup. I do all the narrative, all the writing. Um, my brother comes up with all the art designs and all the all the website you'll see and all of the NFTs. Mm -hmm. So we we basically keeping everything in house. We probably might need to look at someone to help us with the um, the tokenization and the tokenomics, specifically because what we're doing is quite ambitious in terms of a game economy, and we need probably mm -hmm. an expert on that. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then obviously the software development stuff. So we're looking mm -hmm. at doing a number of mini games that are going to be web based get web based games, but are going to have blockchain integration. Yeah, and so yeah. we'll need developers to help us with that. Mm -hmm. but yeah, awesome. I I just wanted to uh, get this uh, out for the audience because not everybody can imagine how much work is behind creating such a project. That because there's actually a lot. So yeah. it's oh no, there's a lot. Like, yeah, 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 there's a lot. I mean, we must spend you know, four to five hours a day, each of us um, on a project like this, you know, with our own lives going on and our own work yep. and everything in the background. So it's mm. it's literally a full-time job. Yes. You know, Saturday, yes. Sunday, Monday through to Friday. Yep. It's, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. it's so can, intense. <laughs> yeah. Currently, uh, I think I spend about six, maybe seven hours a day designing mm -hmm. the pirates at the moment. Mm -hmm. And so it is, it takes a lot of time. Yeah, uh, you, you, you're okay. going through a pretty intense period now because of the mint. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. In particular, the number. This is the first time that you've done the five thousand supply. We've always done a supply slightly smaller than that. Yeah, so, yeah. a lot smaller. So mm -hmm. this is mm -hmm. a lot more traits, a lot more, a lot more everything on it. Awesome, awesome. We are going to talk about a mint a bit later on. We're looking forward to that. So yeah, let's Perfect. move on to another question. Uh, what was the greatest obstacle in building this project? I, I think um, the the biggest obstacle for us was the community part. Um, we we my brother particularly had tried to do a project on Ethereum, and you know had the artwork was great and um, the idea was great, but without having the community, it doesn't get the traction that you need. So mm. so I think for us, we didn't realize that the first couple of times. Uh, and, and you know, my brother didn't even sell any of his NFTs because it simply just didn't go anywhere. But, but, the, but the, coming to Cardano, we realized that building the community was the obstacle we needed to tackle first. And by that time, we'd networked quite a lot with some of the key uh, projects. So we both come from Old Money as a project. That's where we, we, we spend a lot mm. of our time. Um, and so we use that as a networking piece. And a lot of the guys who are in old money are actually the crack and talisman holders. Mm. So, you know, it's through that stage, we, we built up this core diamond hands um, community and they you know, reached out and said, look what these two guys are doing. And, and so, you know, it kind mm. of pulled it on from there, but, but it did take us, you know, we started in September and, you know, for the first two months, it was, you know, four of us in the discord so it's it's it you know it goes yeah. very slowly and then suddenly it starts to pick up momentum and then mm -hmm. and then you start to see the traction but but yeah our biggest challenge i think was was the, the building the community and i think the second part of that is is keeping them engaged crypto mm -hmm. moves so quickly and there's so many new projects coming out and the newest big thing is over there and everyone chases the shiny stuff that the biggest challenge now is you've built a community, but now you've got to keep building them organically yeah. and keep them engaged. Right, that's mm. that's the next piece. Cool, 
it's like a snowball effect. It, it, <laughs> it keeps getting bigger. <laughs> awesome. Thanks a lot. Now let's have a look at question number six. Uh, what outcomes are you proud of the most? Yeah, I think the the outcome, particularly for me, and, I, and I'll let Sean speak for him as well. But but you know, the biggest challenge in my mind and the obstacle that um, we overcome being the community, but more so what we're proud of and I'm proud of is that we don't really have the blockchain tech experience that a lot of people have. And I think mm -hmm. that was quite daunting for us in the beginning because we had to learn about Discord mods and uh, bots and we had to learn how to set up a Discord. And there were so many of these tiny things that probably a lot of people take for granted that we yeah. had to learn for the first time mm -hmm. back now awesome. at a Discord that is fully functional with lots of bots with these really cool things that you can do with the bots. And, and you know, it's that for me is, is, is the nicest thing to look back at is saying there was a massive hurdle for us, but mm -hmm. through perseverance and getting it done, we, we finally got there. Um, I don't know about you, Sean, what, what do you think? What are you happy about what we've done? Well, for me, it's just the project as a whole because we actually sat down and we did something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My brother and I, we've had tons of ideas. We've always spoken about it. We've always gone, we've got to do this, and we've got to do that, and we've got to do this. And then when it was like a half attempt at that, it never went anywhere. And then we kind of spoke about something, just never did it. And then, so mm -hmm. this is just something that we decided, and this is, this is it, we're going for it, and let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, and I still am astounded at how it's developed and how it's going. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think, I don't know from Darren's point of view, but couldn't have expected this in my wildest dreams, the way that it's just taken off. Yeah, I uh, guess there was, there was a really cool moment where, where the first YouTube video, somebody said, oh, they're talking about Order the Kraken. We both just sat there going, this is so surreal. <laughs> this is so weird. Um, uh -huh. I'm, I'm just, I'm glad that, you know, people are getting to appreciate uh, my brother's creative skills mm. you know that's that for me is a really cool thing to see and i mean i mean even still you know he will he will put something out there and go are they gonna like this do are they gonna i'm like dude this stuff is really good <laughs> stuff is really good so so yeah it's it's great cool. to 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 have seen how everything has progressed the way it has awesome yeah. apparently the combination of your persistence and passion paid off yeah well, i think it would be right right place a little bit of luck at the right timing right place mm. right time as well yeah. I yeah. think they had to do it too. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. Thanks a lot. Now let's move on to question number seven. What can we look forward to in the next twelve months? Yeah, I think that the next um, the next twelve months for us is going to be really busy. Yeah, I mean, we've got we've got an action packed roadmap. Um, mm -hmm. but I think we've got it in a you know structured in quite a nice way. So you know, for us, the the next big thing is the March mint. So our big main mint is coming on the on the thirty first of March, and that's the pirates. And then really straight after that, we're going to look at doing our staking platform. Um, mm -hmm. and, and you can see it it's on there as well. And you know, with the staking platform, is going to come our own token. Um, and shortly after we've done our own token, we're looking to do this thing called a mint game. Um, and it's called Liar's Dice, which is a particular game that if you watch the Pirates of the Caribbean, there's a part within that that um, series where they play Liar's Dice, and that's a game that these pirates play. Um, mm -hmm. And we want to use that as our first mini game to you know keep our community engaged, but also have our first utility for our token. So you know players will be able to use this token in the mini game to play against one another. Um, families will be able to play one another. We have 13 families within the Pirates and they can play against one another in the mini game. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to look at doing things where you can upgrade your, your dice, for example, in the mini game using using your your uh, the, the token. So, you know, that's one of the things we're looking forward to. So it's, in essence, you know, the next 12 months is going to bring us the, our own marketplace, the staking platform, mini games, um, and then eventually, you know, we'll end up with the third quarter minting of the ships and then we'll mm -hmm. finally have a package of all of our NFTs together. So that'll be the last mint. There will be other NFTs to follow, but that won't be minting. It will be airdrops and so on. But mm -hmm. we haven't really done much on that yet. But um, yeah, quite a lot in the next 12 months. Um, lots, lots to get into. And you know, the, the aim for the next 12 months is the distribution of our assets and the distribution mm -hmm. of our token and building the community. And once we get to that critical mass and the asset distribution has been done in a good way, we can then start to think about how we take this staking platform and turn that into the next the next uh, part of our mm -hmm. plan. 
it is a packed schedule, a packed plan for, for just 12 months. And uh, especially with, with two of you being all in charge of that. And I think um, that's, it absolutely is. But I think what we've we've managed to do is in Anvil has got a really good partner. So Anvil mm. is going to do our staking platform for us. And Anvil mm -hmm. also going to do the marketplace for us. So we're going to okay. white label their staking and mark. So that's two of the big things on our on our map mm -hmm. that we just need to really give them direction and skin on it and you know reskin it to order the crack in, in order for it to work. So so I'm mm -hmm. thinking we've 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 done well there. Um, but yeah, yeah, time will tell. But that's awesome. that's the point. Yeah. And the most important takeaway is 30 31st of March. That's right. 31st of March is our whitelist um for the pirates, and then the second of April, which is the Sunday is when it opens for the public. So there it is, it is going to be majority whitelisted for the for the pirates. And, mm -hmm. and there are a couple of whitelist opportunities in our Discord uh, still for people to, if they want to try. Um, but there will be a small public mint afterwards. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Cool. Now let's move on to the next question. Um, are you looking for help with all of this? So we 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 were trying to um, keep the project, and um, particularly you know in a bear market is is one of the things you need to think about more than often than not because the aim of the game in the bear market is just to survive. So the projects that are looking after their costs now and building something that is lean and mean during the bear market are going to be the projects that come out really well when suddenly the times come the good times come back again. Yeah. So we've really refrained to, to you know we've had so many so much interest you know people saying we'll come work for you we'll do this we'll do that. And we're trying to keep it as 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 tight as possible on mm. the cost on the fixed costs around you know hiring people. Yeah. So we 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 will look look to start adding more people on, but it'll be a very very slow basis. So not at the moment. Mm. Um, we're full on mods. We're full on um, uh, you know, project collaborators, all that kind of stuff. Uh, marketing. We've got a good we've got good hand, handle on the marketing as well. So not mm -hmm. at the moment, but we will start to very shortly look at someone who can help us on the tech side. So having someone in house. To be able to manage any of our outsourced projects is something that would probably be the first port to call, but will only be after our main mint. Sure, sure. Okay, cool. And uh, question number nine: uh, Could you tell us something personal? Yeah, let's Sean go first. Um, well, for me, so both my brother and I are massive uh, WoW fans. Uh, we play <laughs> days, um, years, in fact. Uh, we both played American football as well. Um, I'm an avid kind surfer because I live in Portugal and the beach is literally five minutes down the way. Right. Yeah, it's very right. it's very annoying. So my brother's in Portugal and I'm in I'm in the UK. Um, and you know, on a Friday during summer, he'll always kind of message me, oh, I'm just off to the beach on Friday afternoon to do some kite surfing. And I'm here in the UK where it's like overcast and gray, and I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah, I've done something wrong with my life. I'm just <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we, we, we love to play a World of Warcraft um, and we ran a, a guild called the Grammaton Clerics um, after the movie. Okay. Yeah, after the movie Equilibrium. Um, and uh -huh. so we, we did that for a good number of years, far too many hours played in, in World of Warcraft. But I guess that also then, that also then gives us the, the passion and the, the emphasis why we want to create this uh, project. Because mm. we had yes. so much fun in that and we want to try and mirror that in a crypto scenario but where people own their assets mm -hmm. and have the mm -hmm. freedom to do what they want with the assets so you know we're trying to mirror that experience we had with the world of warcraft um in this this world that we're creating and and you know if we can get even half of that way, half of that feeling that we had when we were we were doing this i think we would have done really well mm -hmm. okay so shout out to all the crypto people who came here from the wolf background <laughs> I'm, sure I'm sure they're loads it, it yeah, feels yeah, like the more than half of the because every time you mention it, everybody is then they yeah. kind of miss on there at times when they play. <laughs> yeah, great. Okay, uh, our time is running out. So let's have a look at your final suggestion for the audience. Yeah, th thanks, Mike. Just just for final suggestion, um, you know, people always say, am I too late to get in? You're never too late to get into a project. Um, the way to get into Order of the Kraken is, you know, as you've got on the page there now, there are some previous podcasts and Twitter spaces. Go have a listen to those. Um, you'll get a, a little bit of alpha in each one of those or exactly where you need to go. I've written a couple of Medium articles that are mm -hmm. you know eight, nine minutes long, just, just a general overview of what Order of the Kraken is and, and where to go. Um, mm -hmm. My advice would be, if someone wants to get in, is to have a look at um, two family crests. So make sure you get two family crests of the same family. 
Um, mm-hmm. They will give you a whitelist and get a jar of dirt. They will give you a whitelist and potentially a discount on the mint. So there's a 30% discount on a pirate if you get a jar of dirt with a pirate. So those are the, the um, jars of dirt with ships. But if you if they scroll down, there'll be one with the, with a pirate in them. And that gives you a 30% discount on a pirate. So anyone looking mm-hmm. to get in, um, two family crests and a jar of dirt. So that will give you two white listings each and a 30% discount on the pirate. And that will be the best place to get in. So read those articles, um, get a good feeling about the project, get those couple of entities, and then come into the Discord. You know, we've got such an amazing community at the minute. Um, and it was great for my brother and I to see because for the first you know three months, it was always us answering all the questions. But the moment when somebody corrected me for the first time and said, no, actually, that's not how it is. It's actually like this. I was like, okay, job done. The community knows more than me now. Um, so, so yeah, that's that's our final advice on on how to to get into the project. Thank you a lot for your input, everything that you've told us, uh, a lot about your uh, personal background as well, and a lot about what is behind the project, not only from the tech point of view, but your personal perspective. I think that the audience is going to appreciate all your answers. Thank you, Matt. We appreciate Thanks having us on. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Ciao. Bye.